Look, Dad, said the Filrian boy. Look, Dad, he shouted excitedly. The tall and relatively chubby Filrian father, Urulan, with much exasperating, turned to see what the fuss was about. He wondered how his parents dealt with him, if he was this much trouble. But as his eyes set upon the sight which his child had pointed out, he too was in awe. Dad, is that a human? The child asked, excitedly curious. Why, I? He thought about the creature's features, taller than him by a considerable margin. A hairy mane on his head, two arms, two legs, endoskeleton, soft skin, nose, mouth. It could only be. Yes, yes Joral. I think that is a human. He looked once more. They were in a largely desolate area, in the middle of an open field. What would a human be doing here, of all places? And go see him. Asked the boy, jumping up and down, please. He tried to shake his shock at seeing one, but as his senses came back to him, he only said, Yes, yes of course. Let, let's go. They approached slowly, but this human, wearing an elegant dark vest and dark blue trousers, turned to see them approaching. He looked a bit exasperated. Urlin felt a touch of shame, as he must have been the thousandth person, this human would have seen and talked to, for the same reason. Yet, his curiosity got the better of his respect for his privacy. Excuse me. He shouted. Excuse me. The man turned. He had gray curly hair, which moved in the wind. White hair. On a human. He must be even older than most of his brethren. Excuse me. I am so sorry to disturb you sir. He said, bowing slightly to the human. So sorry, but my child really wanted to meet you. Hi human. Said Joral. The human smiled and bent down to meet him and replied. Hello, my name is Keith. What is your name? His name is Joral replied Ural hastily, ensuring that his boy could not mean any disrespect. Hi Joral, the human replied. How old are you? Asked the boy, so much for not being rude. Joral, the father interrupted sharply. No, don't worry, responded Keith. The question is on everyone's mind, always. I am 152 years old. Ural was stunned. 152, that was older than the Federation. His own average life expectancy was 20, and that was because of technology, which was not available to most other races. This meant that this human could have met his great-great-great-great-grandfather, and that would have been nothing to him. His thoughts were only interrupted by his boy, again. That old, the human laughed. Yes, that is, child. But in the end, age is not all that matters. Sir. Started Ural. Please call me Keith. Of course, humans enjoy being called personally. Keith, I am really sorry to bother you, but what brings you here? Oh, I needed to get away from the town for some time. I enjoy being out in the open like this, and not cooped up in office space and spaceships. Reminds me of Earth. He paused for some time, before shaking back into awareness. I'm sorry, but please understand, we feel honored by meeting you here. It isn't always that we meet a legend. Could you? He remembered his childhood when he used to ask this question. Could you please tell us some of your stories? We would love it if you could tell us some of your experiences in your life, and... The human only laughed again. Of course. Come with me on a walk. Ural quickly pulled his boy closer as they walked. How old are you, Ural? I am seven years old. And Joral. He is one. One. The human stared out in the open expanse of hills and forests in front of him. Very well. Most people want to hear about how the Federation was formed. I take it you want to hear the same. Ural only nodded. The human smiled again. But first, do you know why humans are usually at the head of the Federation? Why we are usually at the head of the industries and mining operations? Why we are the best soldiers and politicians and all these things. Well, it is because of only one thing. Ural listened intently. We live for so long that we hone our experiences and knowledge to a fine edge. How long is your education for? Three years. Ural nodded. 
our schools and universities teach us for our 25 to 31st years. 30 years, Murrell exclaimed. That means that an infant human could not contribute to society for more than my most optimistic lifetime. Yes, but you see why we had an advantage over others. While we may be only less than 100 billion people, our combined experience more than compensates for it. 200 years ago, when we first discovered how to travel faster than light, we found ourselves with a very strange advantage. Age and experience. Though opponents could be smarter than us, faster, more cunning, or better in every way, where they would have those advantages. And most of those races had them, so much in fact, that they thought our age made us slow and undynamic. But where their greatest leaders would die off after a war or two, ours would live on, war after war, conflict after conflict, peace after peace. We grew with every experience thrown at us. During the last great war, there were two major factions. Ours, which had us as their leaders, and another, whose name is lost to time. What is the name? You was there? Asked the child. Aha! Yes, I was, and I agreed to not tell anyone, just as every other human who lived there, so long ago. But they were the shortest lived, most dynamic creatures in existence. I was 55 then, but I captained one of the dreadnoughts of the fleet sent in the last great encounter between our alliances. Their fleet's movements were cunning, but we had seen them before. Their torpedoes launched from their great ships, but I knew how to avoid them, as I had seen done on the edge of my memory 15 years prior. They tried to trap us, but our admirals saw it coming. For even their most intelligent movements could be countered by our less cunning, by our more weathered and experienced captains and admirals. They were defeated in a massive victory for us. A trillion lives had been lost that day in a battle which raged across a constellation. But barely three of our dreadnoughts and battleships were even remotely damaged. If I may ask what happened to these enemies? We had a choice, leave them be, and risk threatening the survival of the Alliance. Or cut of their head, and create a new Alliance, a Federation. We chose the latter. Uro looked shocked. You committed genocide, on the ones who must not be named. The human looked down and looked up, slightly sad. No, we didn't. We bombed their home worlds, like we did on so many others. We took the surviving population to the outskirts of the galaxy. We destroyed their memories by forbidding the parents to talk to their children of this on pain of death. Committed to mass re-education campaigns so that they could never know who they were or where they came from. All they know is that we moved them off their planet because of the war. By cuss. Interrupted Joral, his father glared at him. The human smiled sadly. Like yours. He replied and many others whose ancient history was lost to the war. Uro looked at him and asked again, inquisitively, but why are you here? You are Rolvar Teklam, are you not? The father looked surprised. Yes, how do you know my name? Let us say that your ancestor five times removed was a great friend of mine before the war and a wonderful person. He was killed in that battle. You would have been proud of him. He commanded one of the battleships of the fleet. Uril smiled in faked remembrance, but then he remembered something Keith said before. Wait, you said that not a single battleship had been lost. The human tensed up slightly. How can a captain, who is in the safest location of the ship, die, while the ship remains almost intact? The human had no answer. Why are you here? Uril asked again, but this time holding his son closer to him. We humans are everlasting. This means our lives are measured not so much by years, but by the memories we carry and the guilt we drown in. I am here as penance to correct a sin which was committed long ago. Ural stared at him. Things started to make sense now. Every human had so many friends which they lost to age. Every human is filled with the grief of losing someone they cared for so many times that we start to see ourselves as gods, responsible for the memories and lives of every race. We become jaded to the lives of others and blinded to our repercussion. 
We have made very many mistakes, ones which we need to correct if all of us are to survive. Uro looked at him. Are we the ones which can't? The human looked back and smiled, brushed his hand over Uro's head and that of his boy. Just know that the sins of the father should not extend to the children, and it is unfair that we judge everyone's time by our standard. But a man's sins is his own, and I am here not to rectify the sins of my father, but my own and the sins of all those who lived with me. We are everlasting, not omnipotent, omniscient, nor all good. I will find a way to make things right. Uro looked at him as he started to leave to the town. I think I am done with my walk. I hope to see you again, but because of my condition, I don't believe I will. Farewell. The author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.